In this video, I'm going to talk about how the area under a graph can correspond to a value in another graph. So here's a run for a car that's accelerating down an incline. And I'm going to add a velocity versus time graph here. So we can take a look at the area under the graph. So uh, one of the concepts uh, in physics is areas under graphs um, mean something in other graphs. So let's take a look at the area under this velocity graph and see what it means. I'm going to highlight a certain region of interest. I'll go from just at the beginning of time here when it starts to actually move to let's say right there. And I want to find the area under the graph. So I, after I've highlighted it, I click this little icon here that looks like a little curve with uh, some gray under it. And it says the area is 0.74 meters per second uh, times seconds. So a meter per second times a second is meters, which is basically the position or the change in position. So let's take a look at what that 0.74 means. I'm going to put a marker on this graph actually, put a marker on this graph, let's say right here, the same point I started at, right there, and I'm going to grab another marker and put that over at this data point right there, which is correspond to the end of the interval. And you can take a look here that the change in position, the change in position here is 0.86 minus 0.13, which is about 0.73 uh, give or take, and this is 0.74. So this, in this, these two graphs here, you can see that this, the area under the velocity graph, velocity times time, base times height, gives you change in position, or meters, and if you look at the change here, that change, that delta, is what I see with 0.86 minus 0.13. It's off by 0.01 for rounding error, uh, error but basically that would get there. And then furthermore, if I take a look at the acceleration graph, I add one more graph here. It's getting a little tight here, but I'll add another graph. I get a nice little uh, acceleration graph here. It's a little bumpy, but let's find the area under this curve. So let me get the highlighter. Now I'll highlight the same basic region right here to down, let's say here. Okay. And let me find the area under that curve. It's 2.35 meters per second squared times a second. So basically, a seconds cancels, and I get meters per second. So that should correspond to something in this graph. So let me let me uh, turn the area off here, so I can analyze this a little better. Turn off the area. Sorry, in this graph, get the area off. Okay, and let's look at the change in velocity during that time frame. So let me get a marker. Mark this spot right here, which is it's about zero, and then get another marker over here to that end of that time frame right there. Okay, it's close. And so you, you can take a look here, I get a change of 2.46, and that's about zero, so that it's not quite on the same data point. It has to do with the jumpiness of this uh, acceleration graph. But basically, the, ch the area under the acceleration graph is the change in velocity for that time frame, uh, give or take some error because we have a kind of a jumpy graph here. Um, so. Areas under velocity versus time graph correspond to changes in the position graph. And areas under acceleration graph correspond to changes in the velocity graph. And if we take a look, look at lots of different examples with acceleration, deceleration, we'll see the same, uh, same relationship. And uh, this is related to what you can learn in integral calculus, areas under curves uh, that have meaning in other graphs.